More than 920,000 matric pupils have started writing their National Senior Certificate exams on Monday. The current matric class was in grade 10 in 2020 when they experienced the lockdown and school closures due to COVID-19 pandemic. Now with power outages going on in the country, concerns are will the exams run smoothly without disruption and are the students finding it easy to study with the adjustment of the load shedding? Well, let's find out on today's episode. Good evening. My name is Zola. Shalwana. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we unpack this year's grade 12s and year examinations with our, which are currently underway. Now joining us in studio via Zoom is this Gauteng spokesperson of education, Mr. Steve Mabona. Mr. Mabona, welcome to Soweto Today and thank you for joining us tonight. Good evening and to all our viewers. Now we want to understand what were the preparation measures that you took this year to ensure that the exam process runs smoothly? Well, as Gauteng, we prepared our candidates. We have a studio where we take our tutors, who will then be connected remotely to all our schools, most especially in the townships, because they have smart boards. So they just connect and they, they will then receive that lesson. So we've been doing that. And we also had uh, walk-in centers where during holidays and on weekends, we will then um, you know, have the tutors that will be assisting learners. And thirdly, we had residential camps where we took learners for three to four weeks in different camps, you know, them spending time there and they were taken through that process. And we were targeted actually mostly the areas where we had them um, service delivery, you know, protests, the disruptions of schooling, you know, learners from those areas, Quatema, Akani, you know, the Eastern, the Kurulen. So that's where we had a, a serious problem. So we had to take them to residential camps. Mm -hmm. Now, the class of 2022 have started with their first paper on Monday. Have there been any challenges that you've experienced so far since the exams have started? No, everything is going very well. Um, the examinations are smooth. Uh, well, Today, we experienced a challenge of service uh, delivery uh, protest in around the um, first loras. Uh, some of our passes were hindered, but then we managed to, you know, make sure that the learners were, you know, ac ac accessing the, the exam center. So they managed to, to write. So we just want to call upon, you know, the members of the community. When we protest, when we uh, disrupt anything, let's make sure that learners are given a space to go to their exam centers and write, because this is their last opportunity. Mm -hmm. They've been in our sector for about 12 years or so. We need to give them space. We need to respect that now they are writing. Let's make sure that if we are disgruntled, but the grade 12s, let's give them an opportunity to grab the, the opportunity to, to, to success. Now, there are schools, there are schools that are currently underperforming, schools that have a pass rate of like less than 50%. What strategies do you have as a department to ensure that you improve their performance? No, those who have been monitoring very closely, and we know those schools because they've been identified. We had what we call subject advisors, whom were throughout the year visiting and making sure that they support educators in all those uh, schools that we identified over and above that then we then had to take them to to camps you know just to augment on what we've been doing the whole year but subject advisors were working tirelessly they were on the ground they were assisting the hod's of different subjects in our schools or those schools that we identified make sure that they enhance them and uh, so that they can then uh, pull through so we are confident that that work was uh, sufficient Mm -hmm. Now, speaking about uh, camps, these camps have been going on for a couple of years, except, except 2020, obviously, because that was um, when COVID hit the country. When you look at the camps, are they lead, are yielding any positive results with the learners when you look at the performance? Uh, performance? And obviously, I'm assuming that they stay there for quite some time um, and you help them in you know, very important subjects. When you look at that, is it helping? Definitely, it is helping. You know, when we visited the camps with the new MEC, uh, just to check on how learners were doing and how were they taught and the, the environment there, learners were very much appreciative. 
that these camps actually assist them because to a certain extent some of them when they are at home their environment is not conducive mm -hmm. for them to study so mm -hmm. camps are then you know assisting them you know to, to to study and make sure that at least because some families can even afford their tutors uh, we give them tutors to to, to assist the, the learners so they they do play a significant role and uh, I think that's what we're going to be continuing with. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the National Teachers Union has called on the Department of Education to put alternative measures in place, particularly during the days of exams of computer-related subjects. What are the, what are the steps um, that have been put in place to prevent load shedding from affecting matric exams? You will remember that we have actually interacted with ESCOM, City Power, just to make sure that when we write get and uh, IT, we are not impacted. But over and above that, we then, you know, uh, you know, assisted those schools that did not have generators to rent them. But mostly, you know, the generators are available in those schools that are writing or were writing CAT and IT. Those that could not, then we had to take them to the nearest centers where they would not be affected. So there were there were there was no eventuality, there was nothing that we can say yielded the process of the writing of CAD and IT last week. That was successful. And um, those that could not write, maybe for different reasons, maybe they were sick or they couldn't on the day, they would then have to motivate for the concession, which they will then be given an opportunity to write on the 7th of December. All right. Uh, we also would like to know what paper are the matriculants writing right now, especially today? Today it was um, history mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Africans. Um, yeah, those those they were, they were written today, and uh, we continue to monitor and make sure that at least the next papers they go as per what we have planned. Um, the security detail, I mean, our 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 papers are escorted. Mm -hmm. uh, we are quite happy about that because we need to safeguard them. We need to make sure that they don't leak. Uh, so that the, the integrity of our examination is still intact. But for now, we haven't heard of anything that can compromise the integrity of the examination. So we're quite happy. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the conversation continues. There has been a gradual increase in the number of full enrollments in 2022 compared to the previous years. Over 194,000 learners, both part-time and full-time, have enrolled for the National Senior Certificate exams in the Gauteng province. However, the question is, do you think that the Department of Education will be able to reach its goal of attaining good results with this high number? Let's take a short breather. We will get back to the answers right after this. Welcome back. You are still watching Soito today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. If you've just tuned in, we are discussing the 2022 matric final exams and we are still joined in studio via Zoom by the Gauteng spokesperson of education, Mr. Steve Mabona. Now, Mr. Mr. Steve, with that high number of candidates who have registered to write matric exams this year, uh, a total of about 194,611 full-time and part-time candidates, to be precise, do you think that the department is able to top up last year's results? Well, we are hopeful, um, you know, taking cognizance that this cohort, they are the most uh, affected cohort by COVID. Remember, when they, in grade, when they were at grade 10, they were you know, affected and they moved to grade 11. And uh, now this is the, actually was their only year in grade 12 where they were not uh, impacted. But it takes you know, a lot because remember, we had to do a curr curriculum trimming. Uh, they could not finish you know, their curriculum in both 11, uh, grade 10 and 11. So you can understand because the further education training phase, it starts at grade 10. Mm -hmm. So it's quite important that you must learn everything because we are on an exit path. But we are quite um, uh, hopeful with all the you know, strategies that we have employed to try and assist them, that uh, they will yield um, uh, you know, good results for us. If we can have more bachelor passes, that's what will make us happy. You know, last time we had about 55,000 bachelor passes. Mm -hmm. If we can increase that, I mean, with the, the enrollment uh, being so high, we are hopeful that probably we'll get uh, more than that. And once we get that, the 
number one spot, it will just happen autom automatically because we talk big numbers uh, than the provinces that are coming with uh, low numbers. Um, speaking about challenges that they've encountered since 2020, you know, not having to go to school when they're doing their grade 10 and having to pause their curriculum, do you think that the students are psychologically ready for the exams considering the challenges that they had since COVID-19 hit the country? No, they've been um, supported and uh, you would be surprised that actually it's them who sound, uh, you know, positive and uh, they are optimistic actually that they will make it. So it's better when it comes from them who will be sitting. Because remember, when we do revisions, we take you know the old papers and say, as a drill, let's go through the paper, let's check on what is it that you understand on this. And they are confident that uh, they will make it. You'll also understand that the papers differ not much. Mm -hmm. um, papers differ not much from each other because you just check on you know, how, you know, it panned out previously. Mm -hmm. So in, in the recent weeks, uh, Minister Angel Mutsecha stated that uh, the basic education department has had to deal with reported cases where some schools denied learners the right to sit for the NSC exams because they were pregnant. Now, what does the national policy on the prevention and management of learner pregnancy state in that case? No, there's no policy that uh, will say a learner must not write. Uh, whether you're pregnant, it's up on you. If you feel that you are ready to write, you'll mm -hmm. be given that opportunity to write. In the event, during the examination, you know, some, something occurs, there's what we call concessions. We should be in a position to accommodate you to, to write. So there's no policy that uh, will say a learner cannot uh, be writing or be prevented because of um, reasons that um, um, we'll be putting on the table. You can't do that. It's only a learner that will say, I'm not ready, uh, or I have a difficulty and motivate to say, can I be accommodated in a concession? Or there are those that will also even get concession to get more time. Mm -hmm. uh, they will apply to say, you know, circumstances dictate that I need to be given more time. They will apply and they will be granted those concessions. So there's no policy like that. Mm -hmm. Now, let's come to the role that can be played by parents. How can the parents contribute to achieving top results, which you are hoping to produce this year as the department? We need to support the candidates, make sure that we don't send them, you know, to do other chores. Uh, let's just give them this respect. This is the, you know, last hurdle for them. Um, give them support. Uh, make sure that uh, we encourage them to rest. They can study throughout. Uh, take some walks, brief walks, and then come back, uh, rehydrate, you know, drink a lot of water, because healthy body will then also assist you as well. And uh, the service uh, protest, service delivery protest, they must not uh, be a hindrance mm -hmm. to a grade 12s. Let's give them an opportunity to grab this opportunity so that they can then succeed in life because uh, they've been with us for many years now. Uh, let's, uh, let's assist as parents and members of the community. That's what we need to do now. Mm -hmm. Now, as the department um, looking at when the exams resumed, what are the challenges that you've experienced? You know, the calls that you've gotten from schools saying that this is what we've, enc we've encountered, you know, from public schools and private schools. What are the challenges that you've encountered these few days of the exams? No, like as we've indicated, we haven't uh, received um, uh, serious challenges that were significant. Mm -hmm. um, well, logistical uh, the challenges which were, were resolved quickly, we can't call that as challenges that they were significant. So in all the examination, you'll, you'll have pockets of things that you need to attend to urgently, but mm -hmm. they, they, are not, they don't have uh, an impact which is significant. So we did not have that. Yeah, besides, uh, you know, one or two incidences which were within a trust. Mm -hmm. So what, what papers are the matriculants writing from tomorrow going onwards? Let's just say tomorrow and, and Friday. Uh, you got me off guard there. I don't have a timetable with me. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I okay, don't have a timetable. No. I don't know how I like. All right, no, no, it's I fine. Right. No, not a problem. So 
Um, the conversation will obviously continue now. That was very fruitful coming from the Gauteng spokesperson of education, Mr. Steve Mabona, as we are talking about the National Senior Certificates Examination. For now, let's take a quick ad break. We will return right after this. Welcome back. You are still tuned in to Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are unfortunately on the last segment of the show and we are still talking to the Gauteng spokesperson of education about the ex exams which are currently underway. Now, uh, Mr. Steve, there have been reports, multiple reports about question papers that have been leaked before the exams start. What are the additional security measures that you've put in place to make sure that such irregularities during exams do not occur? Well, all our, our printing centers, uh, we have additional surveillance cameras. We do body searches uh, just to make sure that uh, nothing, you know, gets out of the, of, of the center. Uh, monitor very closely because we visited the, the, the printing center. You cannot, you, you, the surveillance, the, all the corners, you, you can't, where there is there's, there's this uh, question papers, there's no way that you cannot account for, for them. Make sure that when they are stored, they are locked. Mm -hmm. And um, the, when the, the keys, there's two people that are, are, are responsible for, 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 the, for that process. There's no one that can go by themselves, go open there. Every time they go in groups, make sure that uh, we don't compromise anything. When we take them to, to nodal points and distribution uh, points, where schools are collecting, they are escorted mm -hmm. by security. Uh, you know, we, we cut them like money, mm -hmm. uh, mm. you know, so that we make sure that they are not leaking. So we have beefed up security much because mm -hmm. we don't want to be responsible for compromising the integrity of the examination. Because if a paper leaks here, you will know that it will go everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. The entire country will then be, will be compromised. So. We also rely on the pledge mm -hmm. that has been signed by learners to say they're not going to be cheating. In the event there's a paper that uh, you know they found before, they have a responsibility to report mm -hmm. so that we can then stop that examination. Probably then you know uh, you know print, have a new a new pa set of paper you know mm -hmm. and all those. So we're quite confident that we're not going to have that. So for, for someone that has been caught, um, someone who has leaked the paper, it could be a student or an official, what happens to that person? A candidate might be barred from writing at this uh, NSC for two years, three years, it depends on what is it that they would have done. And um, someone that is not writing is a criminal offense. We mm -hmm. open a case and then the police come uh, and then one will be taken through the, the, the court processes and then we don't know how the court will then um, you know rule or decide on, 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 on a conviction or whatever you know punishment that would be meted out but it's quite a serious offense to mm -hmm. leak or you've been found uh, in possession of this paper or even selling it so mm -hmm. um, the police will then normally assist us to to take them through the process of um, justice. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the Free State Province has been top achieving, the top achieving province in the country for about three consecutive years. Are you confident that Gauteng Province will take the lead this year? No, we've been achieving all these years. They just mm -hmm. happen to be number one, mm -hmm. but they don't have numbers. When you compare th their numbers with our numbers, Mm -hmm. I mean, like as I've already indicated, we last year we gave the country 55,000 bachelor passes mm -hmm. on top. Mm -hmm. There's no province that produced those bachelor passes. Mm -hmm. When you look at our diplomas as well, the higher um, and the quality. What what do you are, what we are emphasizing as counting is quality. Quality results. The more we have quality, the more we have a, a quality passes, uh, then that makes us happy. Uh, to be number one, well, it will be a cherry on top if we happen to be there, but we are fixated by quality than uh, being a number one that does not have numbers. Mm -hmm. So um, what are your last words of encouragement um, for the class of 2020, those people that are you know, looking forward to next year and being in, in university or any tertiary institution? 2023, actually. 2022, yes, the class of 2022. 
Yes, uh, they need to work hard. They need to work hard. Um, I mean, this is the uh, last time, like as I've indicated, uh, make sure that they revise. Um, I mean, you can't do more than what we did. We did humanly possible mm -hmm. for them to achieve, you know, from the teaching component. Now it's up to them. They need to go and then and, and, and work hard and make sure that uh, they make the, the country, their parents, everyone proud mm -hmm. so that then they can um, they move into the corporate world. Those that are going into the institution of higher learning, they can you know, move there. And um, we, we, we are happy to give them buzzer access counting. Um, we have opened the, the, the system uh, on the 1st of November. Mm -hmm. For those that uh, would qualify to go to the you know institutions of higher learning to, to go there and, uh, and apply. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, on a different note, the Gauteng City Region Academy Bursary applications are currently open for the 2023 academic year. Um, and they are set to close on the 28th of February 2023, if I'm not mistaken. Now, please briefly tell us about the application process in terms of the requirements and how can candidates apply for the bursary. Now they need to log into um, GCRA Bazaris mm -hmm. um, dot, uh, dot .za. So mm -hmm. it will take them through the process of application. It will also give them all the requirements. But what is key, you need to be a South African mm -hmm. and um, a Houten uh, learner or someone that, uh, you know, was in a housing school, and the ages must be from 18 to 35. Mm -hmm. Those are the, um, the critical points that will then assist you to access this bazaar. Um, you will then have to be a top achiever in our school, or um, you, you learn us with the disabilities. Uh, those that are at the universities or you know institution of higher learning, they can still you know apply as well because we'll then do, do, they will probably want to continue further their studies in the manner finance. We we assist them. Those that want to do you know you have post grads, honors, masters, it depends. Uh, you know we are in a position to to also assist them. So, but key is to access the the app, and a lot of information is available in there. Okay, so, so the bursary is not for someone that is fresh from, from, from high school, anyone who's completed matric in Gauteng, as long as they're below uh, the age of 35? Yeah, as long as they are between 18 and uh, the age of 35. They oh. do qualify to apply, and uh, during the process of us um, sifting on who qualifies, then we'll be in a position to say, yes, can grant you this bursary or not. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much once again for joining us, sir, and thank you very much for your time. Now, that uh, was uh, Mr. Steve Mabona, who is the Gauteng spokesperson of education, talking to us about the 2022 National Senior Certificate exams and also touching on the application process of the Gauteng City Region Academy Bursary for 2023 academic year. If you meet the criteria and wish to apply, be sure to do so before the closing date, which is on the 28th of February 2023. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please please feel free to engage with us by simply sending us an email on Soweto Today at sowetotv.co.za. Alternatively, you can contact us on 011-9333000. From myself and the rest of the team, we will see you on the next news bulletin that's coming right after this. So goodbye for now.